Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to a brand new series on how to code your own custom spigot plugin. And this will work for any of the denominations of buckets. So it'll work for bucket, spigot, paper, all those different versions should be fine. But in this episode, we'll just be setting up your workspace so you can get started. So in the description of this video, there will be a bunch of links to different programs. And the first one you wanna click is the Java JDK 8. And that will take you to this page right here, the Java SE Development Kit 8 downloads page. And if you scroll down a little bit um, right here, you'll see a bunch of different operating systems. And, and in my case, it's a Windows 64, but you can choose whatever operating system you have and make sure you're downloading the JDK 8. It has to be the JDK 8, otherwise this will not work. You can't use other Java versions, unfortunately. So uh, if you click here, you can download the EXE for Windows, but again, Oh, looks like there was a problem. If that ever pops up, you can just reload the page by hitting enter and clicking it again. And there we go, it should work. It'll ask you to accept its license. Hit accept, download the JDK, and it'll download to your computer. If you don't have an account with Oracle, it will ask you to create an account. And I know this is really annoying, but you are gonna have to create an account. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to download it. So you can make an account really easily and then download it to your computer. So once it's on your computer, it should be on your desktop here. Uh, you can double click it to open it up and it'll ask you, uh, do you want this device to allow changes? You can hit yes, just an administrator pop up and you will get this install wizard. You can hit next. You can just ignore pretty much all of this, hit next. Um, it'll install the JDK and then it'll also install the JRE, which is the runtime environment. So give it a second here. There we go. So that you'll get this pop up. It's just saying, where should I download the uh, the JRE? You can keep it, you know, everything default and hit next. And this will take a little bit to install. So I will see you guys when it's done. All right, so you can see here that it says Java was successfully installed and that means everything was good and you can close this now. And we can actually throw this away in our recycle bin because we're done with Java for now. Uh, so the next link you wanna click in the description, if we go up here, is the second link, which will take you to IntelliJ. So IntelliJ is an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. And it's just gonna let you code a lot easier and help you out when you have errors in your code. So I would really recommend it, although you can use Eclipse and I think Microsoft Studio is fine as well. So any of those work, but uh, I'm gonna download the community edition because I, I don't wanna pay for the ultimate, right? So hit download and it should download automatically. This is just a thank you page. Uh, and it's gonna take a little bit to download, but I already have it on my desktop here. So it'll be this ideal C uh, program right here. And you can double click this and uh, it should pop up in just a second. Yeah, you'll get this little uh, administrator pop up. Hit yes, then uh, hit next, next again. Um, you wanna leave all of this the same except uh, add a 64-bit launcher to your desktop and you want to add launchers directory to the path and I think that's all you really need you can hit next uh, install and it'll just install IntelliJ now All right, so the last thing you have to do to install IntelliJ is reboot your computer uh, so it can set the path variables correctly, I guess. Um, so you can do this you know, right now if you'd like or in a bit, but I'm gonna hit finish and manually reboot. So I will see you guys when I restart my computer. All right, so hopefully your computer restarted fine and we're back on the desktop and you can actually get rid of this installer here since we don't need it anymore. And what we need to do next is create a folder to store all of our information. So right click on your desktop, new folder and name it something you know obvious like plugins or plugin dev. And you can drag this over to the side here and inside of our plugins folder, if we double click that, we wanna create a new folder in here, two actually. The first one is gonna be a new folder and we're gonna name it server. And then another folder, right click, new folder. And this is gonna be called dependencies. Dependencies. Oh, there we go. And so the server folder is gonna house our actual Minecraft server where we're gonna actually test our plugin. And the dependencies is gonna be all of the dependencies that our plugin relies on to actually work. So uh, as you can see here, I have on my desktop paper. We're gonna install that in a second. So you can close out of here. 
So if you navigate to the next link in the description, it should take you to Paper MC over here. And all that paper is, is basically a denomination of spigot that is just has higher performance. And that's why I'll be using it. But again, you can use spigot, you can use bucket, or paper MC, whatever you'd like, as long as it's a denomination of bucket. And just click the uh, the you know newest build, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're all very similar. So you can just click the newest build here and it will download to your computer. But I have it on my desktop here. And once it's on your desktop, you wanna right click and rename it to server. Just so it's easy for you to see and go to your plugins folder here, go to server and you wanna just drop it in. Drop it right in and in, once it's inside of our server folder, we can right click, create a new text document and you wanna name this run. And if we open this up, so what we're gonna put in here is the actual run uh, config so that we can actually run our, our server. So if we go up to the final link in the description, which should be a paste bin, uh, it'll take you to this paste bin here that I made, which is just to uh, to make it easy for you to create your server. You just wanna copy this, uh, this raw paste data right here. Right click, copy, and just paste it right into the, uh, the run notepad. Paste it in and uh, make sure that it says server here, of course, server.jar. But uh, if you know you name this something else, then make sure to change this right here to whatever you named this um, this server. So, but if not, just save it how, is it how it is. So file, save as, desktop, and you wanna save it as a run.bat. That's run.bat. And make sure you save as type as all files. It's very important. And hit desktop, or I mean save, not desktop. Uh, and if we close out of here, we can see it is on our desktop and we do have a dot bat um, executable. And then we can actually delete this, uh, this text document now. But now if we actually hit this, uh, this run, double click it I mean, it will uh, actually run the server and it's gonna take a little bit of time, but it will generate a EULA first. So it's probably not gonna work the first time around. Yeah, you can see here, fail to load EULA. So if we close out of here, we have to open up the EULA now that was generated and we wanna switch the false here to true. And all this is saying is that you agree to the, the EULA of Mojang and, of, and Spigot in general. File, save, and once it's true, you can run uh, the run uh, Windows batch file again by double clicking it. And this will take a, a little bit of time, a few minutes, so I'll, I'll meet you guys when it's done, but it will download a bunch of files just so you know, and make sure to allow access, of course. All right, so that wasn't too much time at all, actually. It does say done here to let you know that's done. And um, you can close out of these now. Uh, and if it's not closing, you can always uh, type stop and press any key to get rid of that. So now you can see we have a bunch of files here and this is our server. So anytime you wanna run the actual server, you're gonna click the run button right here and that will run your server. And in plugins here, this is where you're gonna drop off your plugin. You can see it's empty right now, but uh, this is where you'll put all your plugins. So hopefully you sort of have an idea how servers work, but that's the general idea. Uh, and if we go back here, we can actually drag our IntelliJ into our folder as well. Although you can keep it on your desktop, whatever you'd like. So uh, the next thing we have to do is create an actual folder for your plugin. So think about the name of your plugin, whatever you wanna call it, that's gonna be the name of this folder here. So in my case, it's gonna be tutorial because that's just what we're making, a tutorial. So I'm gonna right click, new, folder, and the name of my plugin is tutorial. Oh, capital U there, tutorial. Gosh, I cannot spell today, <laughs> tutorial, there we go. Enter, and you should have a folder there now. And now when we open up IntelliJ, we're gonna set all of our code to be in this folder. So let's open up IntelliJ here. And it will take a second because, oh, we, we have to uh, make sure we accept the privacy policy. You can confirm, hit continue. And uh, you can share your data if you'd like. I'm gonna send statistics, sure, why not? And uh, we can, this is just the setup here. I'm gonna choose dark mode. Um, and we can skip remaining and set defaults. And there we go. So we have IntelliJ now and we wanna create a new project. So create a new project. And we want to make sure that it's Java. So make sure you click on Java here, hit next, uh, next again. And the name of your project here in the top left corner is gonna be the actual name of your plugin again. So in my case, tutorial and the location of your project, this is very important. Click the uh, three dots over here. Navigate to users, the name of your uh, your computer. Go to desktop, 
plugins, and that folder we just created of, with the name of your plugin. So in my case, it's tutorial. Click on that and hit okay. And you can see our, our plugin is gonna be in that folder now. So we can hit finish and this should create your project. It might take a few uh, seconds, maybe even a minute if you have a slow computer, but uh, close out of that and we'll make this full screen here. Uh, it's just indexing really quickly, but uh, you can actually click this little thing over here if you don't get this window, click project one, that'll uh, toggle this little window if you don't have it. But uh, here's your project here, the tutorial project, and um, we can close this for right now. And if you extend this out, you can see we have a source folder, and this is where we're gonna put all of our source code. So we'll be doing that in the next episode just so we can space it out, but uh, your plugin actually exists now thankfully. So um, we just need to give it a dependency. So we want to close out of IntelliJ here and go to the description of this video again and click the last link. It should be to the Spigot API and it will take you to this page right here. It's a repository with all the Spigot APIs and uh, you want to click on the version that corresponds with the Minecraft version that you want to use. So uh, this, unlike modding with Forge, this tutorial should work for pretty much any version of Minecraft. It's been pretty much the same process, um, no matter the version. So uh, I'm going to do the most up-to-date version, of course, because I want the most up-to-date plugin. So I'm going to click 1.15.2 here. But if, you know, for example, you wanted to do a 1.12 plugin, you could just click 1.12.2 here. So I'm going to click 1.15.2 and you're gonna see a ton of different things here, a ton of different files. Just scroll down to the uh, closest .jar. You can see there's sources.jar, shaded.jar. You just want .jar right here, spigot API .jar. And you can click this and it will download to your computer. Just give it a second. And once it's downloaded, you can go to your downloads. I'm gonna drag it out here real quick. Uh, once we have it on our desktop, we can right click rename, and you can just get rid of all this filler information. We just want spigot-api-1.15.2, just so it's clear for us. And if we open up our plugins folder, and we go to dependencies here, we can drag it in and just close this out. And once we go back to IntelliJ, we can now actually add this as a dependency. So right click on, or I guess don't right click, click on file and go to project structure and uh, it'll probably send you to project, click on modules, and then click on, uh, you know, in this top bar here, click on dependencies. And there's already a broken one here. I'm just gonna remove that really quickly. It will probably look like this for you. And you can hit plus here, the plus sign. And you wanna click jars or directories. And you wanna navigate to, again, users, the name of your computer, desktop, plugins, dependencies. And once you're in dependencies, open this up and you want to click spigot-api-1.15.2. Hit OK and just check it right there. Hit apply and OK. And that should add it as a dependency so we can actually use the API in our code. And that's pretty much it for this part of the tutorial. Uh, we set up our workspace and it's all working now. And in the next episode, we'll actually be coding to register our plugin and get it started with some basic stuff. So thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode.